Hey, hello everyone and welcome to Extreme Graphics Tech. My name is Angelo. Um, well, today I am here to talk to you about something that is really a passion of mine. Um, and it's not a passion, like a recent passion ever since FSR or DLSS came on. No, it actually, uh, I think is something that I have been praising since the introduction of the PlayStation 4 Pro. And the reason I'm talking about the PlayStation 4 Pro is because I think that's the first time when we actually, as a community of gamers, started talking about reconstruction techniques, like, for example, the checkerboard that was used at the time to try to make the games look more 4K. So... I think ever since then, many people started to use it as a weapon, like, oh my God, these are not real pixels and so on. But I always been a defender that the fact that we can use techniques to get 80 or 90% there while saving 50 or 40% of performance is actually an amazing trade off. And this is has just gotten better because now we have FSR, we have DLSS, XCSS, and now Microsoft is introducing DirectSR, which is something that is not a, like a reconstruction technique, but is a way to make the integration easier. The reason I find all of this fascinating is because I love fake pixels. I love them, yum, 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 and I eat them with very, uh, very joyous fake pixel, fake frames. I think they are phenomenal. And what the reason I say this is because you have to understand something. The need for power or performance has grown exponentially. Before we were taught, we were playing at 800 by 600, 640 by 320, 640 by 480, and so on and so on. Then let's say we settle at, at, at 1080p. But now we are not just talking about 1080p. We are talking about 4K, which only in pixel is four times more uh, requires four times more power than the 1080p version of the same because you are using 8 million pixels instead of two but on top of that while i used to play like a 35 fps with my voodoo at the time on unreal now you don't want to be lower than 60 and then you're trying to get to 120 144 240 and all of these uh, together with the fact that you're getting uh, a 4K resolutions, that you're getting uh, ray tracing and more and more performance has made it that the software is advancing in the requirements or the need faster than the uh, GPUs can supply. So for all of these reasons, you cannot use only brute force to keep pushing the GPUs because the silicon is not there. Unfortunately, this has ended. We know all of this is true as much as we want to say, no, it's Nvidia that doesn't want to release power for cars because if that's, the, that's true, why hasn't AMD done it? Because they could then just take the market by releasing a card that is much more powerful than Nvidia. Because if they, if Nvidia release a card that is not powerful enough and they could, well, AMD, AMD is right there, right? If they release a GPU, a uh, double as fast as any Nvidia for the same price, people are going to flock to AMD. But the reason is none of them actually can deliver what they can at the price we're expecting. So they have to come up with new solutions, um, more intelligent or faster solution to render the games uh, the, at the levels we want and at the quality we want. So these are the reasons why now we have FSR, DLSS, XESS. I understand many people keep using the rhetoric that these techniques are only used so people, so the developers are lazy and they don't optimize. I, and I'm sure there may be some games where this is true. Um, uh, probably more than one, okay? But this is not always the case because there are games like Avatar or Alan Wake that they are really pushing the graphic envelope. But if they want to push the envelope now, they need to use these techniques because Avatar is a completely ray trace game even when you don't have a ray trace card. So if you don't have a ray trace card, it's going to use some form of software ray trace um, uh, pushed by a uh, shader core, by CPU and so on. But it's a fully ray trace game. It's not path trace. It's just using ray trace for calculations of lights and so on. And there is probably lots of optimization depending on what sort of GPU you have. You know, like one pixel every four or whatever. But the point is that to get that kind of fidelity, we are going to need more and more GPU power. And before, probably we'll have already changed our RX 580 or our RX 10. 60 because um, without these techniques, those two GPUs would not be able to play these games at a decent level. 
it, they will not. But thanks to FSR, in this case in particular, more thanks to AMD that I made it agnostic, um, we can play those games, okay? Even today, a 2023 game that has been released very powerful, we can still play it because we have these techniques that allow us to run the game at a decent resolution and frame rate. And to illustrate what I'm saying and what I'm trying to show you, I have some examples here. And I'm going to start with Cyberpunk 2077 in the overdrive mode. You know, this mode is very heavy, it's bad trace, and I'm also running at 1440p on the NVIDIA RT at 4060. So as you can see there, it's a struggling to play this game. Uh, it's absolutely chaotic and it's just like 10 frames, 12 frames per second, which makes have the cinematic value and we are not even there but there is no denying that the game looks absolutely beautiful with the lightning the shadows the reflection everything looks so gorgeous but this is not a bad optimized game it's just tremendously demanding so this is not for everyone and not everyone will have to play with need a, like an rtx 4090 but by activating only two options my friends which is F dlss in performance mode and uh, frame generation we get this really nice and it's a mood and beautiful gameplay we can even go to ultra performer if you want and yes i know this there, there is some issues it's not perfect but i will dare to say that this is much better to play on a playstation 5 a 1440p 30 fps with fsr with just two ray trace options so my point at the moment is that we are getting an amazing experience on a path trace game and we are getting like five times more frames by activating two simple options. And I dare you to say that you won't prefer to play it like this than in many other options if you have the opportunity. And that's the same for another CD Projekt game that was updated last year and it looks amazingly beautiful, which is The Witcher 3. As you can see here, when we activate everything, this game runs at just 20 FPS. And once again, this game looks so much better now with all the lights casting shadows and, you know, illuminating the surrounding in a believable and beautiful way. But this, there is no way we can play like this because we are using native settings, okay? Uh, native resolution. And yes, we could uh, lower the resolution or lower the settings, but why lose all that beautiful graphics? Is there are other ways to get like an 80 to 90% of the same we have right now without sacrificing? And that's by activating frame generation and DLSS performance. Once again, we're only rendering like 20% of the real frames we're seeing, but the end is the perceived quality is still amazing. Uh, I honestly, if you are playing, just playing, and I never show you or tell you, you are going to have a hard time telling me you didn't know it was native. I mean, yes, there are going to be signs, but if you start looking for them, the point is that when you are playing, you forget about all of that. You just immerse in the game. And as you can see, we have a much better experience and we didn't have to sacrifice the sex. Of course, when you're playing, you can play with that so you can get that perfect balance. But the thing is that you're preserving most of what makes the game beautiful. In Starfield, for example, there's a game that recently introduced FSR 3 and previously DLSS 3. Um, well, you know, if you play with a 4060, it's a $300 GPU. It's not the most um, up to date or potent um, a powerful GPU out there. So we have this running at 1440p ultra settings and it's running, I will say decent enough, you know, it's 40 FPS and maybe you limit it to 30 FPS or you leave it because in some areas like interiors is going to probably go above 60 FPS. However, we, uh, you know, we, we are not getting that minimum uh, frame rate that many are looking for, which is the 60 FPS. So the only option we have here is either go to 1080p or lower the settings, which is going to lose a lot of details and quality. But now we activate DLSS performance and frame generation on, we go up to 80 FPS in this area and we have not lose all the settings, shadow, uh, light and so on and so on that makes the game beautiful. But on the resolution, even though it's lower, it's n we are not really missing that much. And the frame generation at that extra touch of, um, let's say, smoothness to the image because playing it, you won't say, ah, but it introduces lag. Well, for these sort of games, I don't think you're going to notice or doing anything. And it's better than when we were playing a 40 FPS. So we are getting less lag technically because it's running faster now with the LSS performance on the rate. 
uh, and so we are basically on the same and to show this better i'm going to show you this uh, these games on the, this sequence side by side so you can understand how much better the uh, experience is in this case we're playing a playtale requiem that is going from 20 to 60 something fps three times more performance or at least theoretical performance because as i said this is about perceived quality right and that's i think is the important part it doesn't matter if they're fake if they're real the important thing is what you're perceiving and i am quite sure you can see how choppy the other image is and how smooth the next one to it is and how good it looks I don't think you are going to see many difference between them. Yes, there are. I'm not saying there are not. And that would be lying. But I don't think that the the difference that is losing too much. What I mean is you're losing more by lowering the settings or by lowering the resolution by just activating this settings and i think in this case this game is making great use of the technology and you're going to enjoy even on this car a very nice um performance uh, and a very nice gameplay on this one we even can test with a different game in this case is the uh, game robocop and as you can see here we are getting once again around three times more performance from 30 to around 90 fps and once again i don't see anything wrong or anything that i will say i don't want to play like this on the on the 4060 because these fake frames and fake pixels are not looking the way i think they should look i think it looked fantastic so as you saw we took an rtx 4060 which is not like the highest level car and it's only 300 dollars car and we are playing games that initially will run without these techniques at 10 or 20 fps and we are taking them above what i will call the level of playability and in some cases as close to 60 some cases even over 60 and we could take them further i just didn't want to push it more because i was pushing for higher fidelity and so on i have the games on high and so we i could on ultra i could have put the game on medium and get even better performance and so on but my point was trying to show you how much performance we can gain by just changing two settings and be there and still have a very good and playable experience right so you may think, yeah, but you're using our RTX 4060, that's the latest series of GPU, it's at the same time, even though it's $300, which is not little money, but it's still, you know, um, a powerful car, one of the latest one. But this is the beauty of these techniques, that this is not only for these sort of cars. If we, I tested also, for example, with the modest R, uh, RX 5500 XT, and these were the results. And as I said, this is not just about, you know, playing with RTX 4060, which is the latest series of GPU. This is also about giving longevity to all cars. In the case of the RX 5500 XT, which is a very modest car with 8GB of VRAM, you can see here the playing avatar at 1080p with high settings is only giving us 20 to 30 FPS, which is not ideal for this sort of game. And the reason I'm using the overlay is because FSR interferes with the MSI Afterburner one, but this is valid the same. This is the AMD, AMD integrated one. But now when we put FSR on balance and we put the frame generation on, then we go up to 50 FPS and when it stabilizes, I don't know, it takes a little bit to stabilize, but when we go to above 60 and up 70 FPS and you know we have a much better experience yes fsr in this game introduces some artifacts that they have been patched today by the way but it's still it's not perfect but i think it's much better than the alternative which is either going down or lower the quality of the game this is perfectly playable the same for Starfield is uh, we tested before when testing it again with FSR 3 frame generation now where with a 5500 XT at 1080p we are here we are setting it up at ultra settings and just taking this to the max like to the extreme we could play like with high or medium settings instead to get around 30 to 40 FPS and you can see there is still a lot of stuttering here however um, just to prove how far we can take the technology and take advantage of it then we can just activate in this case a FSR with the 60% resolution scale and frame generation on and this is a much better and a smoother experience that we were having before and even though FSR super resolution is not as good as the LSS I will dare to say that you, I will play like this any day of the week <laughs> instead of the other option and of course I could just lower the settings and get it to high or medium and probably go much higher than 60 FPS but because this is the worst case scenario in this area then I don't think I mind too much to just keep it like this for example 
Another game that is not beloved, but it has Brain Generation 3 on it, is Forspoken. And yeah, it's playable like this because you can get 30 FPS, right? And that's more than enough, probably. This is max settings. We could lower some settings and get some more uh, FPS, but we never get to that 60 FPS that we're looking for. So in this case, we will have to limit maybe the frame rate to 30 and call it a day. Um, yes, enjoy the game. No problems. Uh, you know, I, I'm not one of those that has to play a 60 FPS. However, if we have frame generation, why not use it and FSR? And at this point, we're getting a game that is above 60 and feels much better than before. There may be some hiccups here and there because FSR introduces some shimmering. But if you ask me which one of the two versions I prefer to play, it's clear that I would prefer to play this one. And all of this is using those hated fake pixels and frames. I just love them. So as you can see, we can push the RX 5500 XT to frame rates that up, uh, they will not be possible otherwise, okay? At least at the levels of quality and setting the game just for testing purposes. So you can lower the quality and you'll get more frames and you maybe can even play at 100 frames with just a mere RX 5500 XT, which is a very modest GPU nowadays and it's quite old, four, four, four or five years old already. So. The, the point I'm trying to make is that I, I, I know there is a lot of people that for some reason hate fake pixels, fake frames, but at the end of the day, what I think is important is the perceived image, okay? If the, everything that is made up is fake, and I don't care how it's made, maybe by a hamster, by a guinea pig on your computer, just drawing or doing it on a wheel, I don't care how they are drawn, if they're real, if they're not, as long as the perceived image I'm getting is enough to trick my eyes into thinking that everything I'm seeing is just script, beautiful, and what it should be, I don't care how they are made. I don't care if they are real, if they are not, if they are native, if they are fake, if they are AI, if they are FSR. What is important for me is that people are able to enjoy games, very new games, using old cards by using these techniques. And the important part here is that these techniques are just starting. I think we are going to see more and better uh, uh, system that are going to allow to have better situation. For example, the next Nintendo Switch 2 may come with DLSS. So, so something that we couldn't do before that was, you know, play a higher resolution on Nintendo Switch now may be possible due to DLSS just by using that because we know the power and power uh, constraints that uh, uh, temperature and efficiency that we have like on a portable system is not ever going to be the same as a um, normal console so if we can have that sort of um performance even on a nintendo switch by using this sort of techniques i think it's a win-win for everyone um so as i said the only reason i created this video is because normally i try to um satisfy my own curiosity so i see some game i see some situation i see uh, how much is this actually helping how much is this getting is and is it any good and you know, I, I want to answer those questions for myself and I make a video about it and I share it with you guys because I think, it, well, it's, you know, some of you may have the same questions and would like to know. So normally that's why I do this sort of video. Also, when I am not very imaginative sometimes and I just come up with whatever I come first to my mind. But as you can see here, I think this is sort of an interesting topic. I don't know what you think about, you know, uh, scaling resolution, frame generation and all those uh, area so let me know in the comments below and also please if you can subscribe to the channel we're very close to a 1000 that will allow me to monetize i'm going to be honest here i would like to be able to monetize this channel because there are videos that have more than 30,000 views that i have not been able to get a penny from or a cent from so uh, if i am able to monetize the channel i will really love that so um if you can subscribe you will do me you will be doing me a big favor so thank you very much, and as always, see you on the next video.